Good day, watchers. Welcome to Perth Watch, your horology channel broadcasting from right here in Perth, Western Australia. Today, I have a piece from Swiss watches, Swiss watches, you know, and we'll talk about the particular domain name, but this box has nothing to do with the internal packaging. It's kind of just stacked together. And this is, of course, kind of a bit of an OEM off the shelf box, but hey, it is imminently spinnable that's at least a four and a half out of five one of the best i have ever seen i put that sticker in there just to identify what is in here all right so what have they packed in here you know some tools actually which is kind of handy except it doesn't really work uh with this push pin bracelet links which i've left in there and it does come in this uh fancy you know i, I guess handy not fancy protector but it doesn't quite work with that fake uh, barnacle on this particular watch here but it does work on the other watches anyway so what we have here i should kind of start this running is their seiko seamaster professional 300 m mod right this is what this is called the seamaster professional 300 m mod and that's very much the watch that of course it is based on and i have the real thing here this is of course one of my most beloved uh, watches and you can see Spiritually, very much uh, this model in terms of size. It's a 41 millimeter model, but they've taken the wave dial. Hopefully you can appreciate the wave dial from the newer model as well as the more visible bezel. And the bezel visibility of this model certainly was one of the most criticized things as well as the wave dial that a lot of people missed. Uh, and But dimension wise, very much more this model rather than the updated uh, 42 millimeter size on the newer uh, models. So, you know, RRP on their website, 400 USD, but on sale at 320, maybe they will only ever sell on sale. Let me know if you see it uh, on full price. I think realistic price 320 is probably uh, what this discussion should be based on. Right, a little bit more about Swiss watches. Uh, you know, they, it was a bit confusing to be honest. You know, why, uh, you know, do they have uh, not Swiss watches, uh, you know, and, and Seiko movements and shipping out of Hong Kong. Uh, why do they call themselves Swiss watches? They are Finnish based. Uh, apparently they used to kind of stock uh, pre-owned Swiss watches as well as uh, Swiss uh, fashion items. That's why that was created. That's what they've explained to me. Uh, but then they've moved more into Seiko modding, but haven't quite changed the domain name. They are considering that because of the confusion that can understandably arise from that domain name swiss watches all right moving on quickly then i'm just gonna pop up the stats of the movement here it is an nh35a uh, it's running pretty well you know about minus two to minus one just slightly slow in the one week i've had this running uh, and i'm just going to put the case dimensions there that you can see right in terms of the thickness uh, i did you know put it there it's 14.5 just let you look how it looks like on the side profile. I think this is one of the important things to me is being able to appreciate how it looks like on a side profile. I always try to show that in my reviews. In terms of finishing, it is very much an Omega style, right? Completely brushed bezel there, kind of this scallop edged bezel, which is very much Seamaster 300M. Um, the brushing is on the top surface, right? Just that little bit on the lug there. Uh, longitudinal brushing on the side and of course it's got polish on that omega curve uh, bezel uh, sorry a curved lug there and they very much have done a very good job on this case this is a very well made case to fit on this the finishing is really quite good polish on the bottom surface of the lugs there that you can see uh, this helium escape valve I, I, I kind of mentioned the barnacle here is actually false it doesn't actually open it is really just there to imitate uh, the Amiga it is non-functional okay uh, in terms of the, the case back right it is a wave edge and and you might know that the you know the real model the original uh, current model of the Seamaster 300M uh, professional is wave edged and it does have a display back but it's a bit questionable why would you display an eBosch NH35A, probably not the best movement to display. In fact, it's nothing to look at and probably better just to give us some nice case back stamped art or something. You know, that's my opinion, like the Omega does on the older model. Uh, now, this looks like a screw down case back. Um, it, it, it doesn't look like a push in. Like, I don't see an edge where I can, you know, lever it out. 
uh, and certainly won't take a tool to this wave edge. It's not something I want to do, at least not until after I'm done with this watch. Uh, they've actually rated this at 3 ATM, 30 meters. I don't know why. It's a screw down uh, plain crown. Uh, I presume it's a screw down display back. Uh, so this could easily do 100, maybe even up to 300 M in terms of just making it waterproof. But they've put it at 3 ATM. I've asked them to confirm that. And if they do, I will put an addenda down the bottom, whether it is truly just 3 ATM. That's actually a bit odd to me for a 300 M, you know, Seamaster homage here. Moving on to the dial then. So this is a matte dial. And I think that's a good choice because the original is a uh, gloss. And some people don't like that. This is a matte wave edge dial, very much a, a copy of the Omega Seamaster, right? It is a matte blue wave dial with applied brand name. And they put Seiko there and applied indices in 12 positions. Of course, it's not at the three o'clock position because of that white date wheel there. And that white date wheel is okay. You know, it does balance out uh, the missing indice on that point there. It's got printed word automatic in the six o'clock position, as well as printed chapter ring. And the original does have printed chapter ring. That's kind of just lifting off the Omega. Uh, the hands are partially skeletonized sword and owl hands like the original, but they've chosen to blue it. Now that's an interesting choice. I don't mind that. It does reduce uh, the visibility of the overall hand uh, somewhat, but it's got that bright loom, you know, painting on it. So I don't mind it. That's actually not too bad in terms of the choice of bluing the hands. A lollipop for the seconds. And it's got loom on all the usual spots. So all three hands and in the, uh, you know all 11 indice positions and the bezel pip. A loom shot right here, of course, to let you see how it looks like in the dark. Right, moving on then. Uh, you know, like the original, a lightly domed sapphire crystal. That's what this is. Right, just slightly doing nothing too heavy there, and I think that's good. It's a good choice. And don't put, don't give me a flat sapphire on a watch like this. Uh, and the bezel around it, right, is a 90 click unidirectional dive style bezel with, I presume, a ceramic insert. Again, they doesn't state on the website. I've asked them to confirm it, and we'll put an addenda if they do. Let's just listen to it. Nice clicks, five, ten. Okay, so 15 clicks, uh, it is 90 click unidirectional. I'll tell you what, it, it's a little bit loose, but when you click it, you know, pretty much no black play. So that's very interesting, you know, the fact that it's slightly loose, but when you do click it into position, it just has no back play whatsoever. You know, th that fit in there is pretty darn good, I have to say. Uh, moving on to the bracelet then. So it's got this, you know, nine piece per link tank tread style. Uh, Omega bracelet, right? The Seamaster bracelet. The solid end link, unfortunately, you know, hopefully you can appreciate it. It's actually rather loose. That That is slight disappointment there, I have to say to me. Uh, it does have screw links. It's got push pins uh, and it's got a very solid push button release clasp with a dive extension. The fitting here is only average, I have to say. Uh, and you can see the fitting on the bracelet. It's not the best. This, this link here, this you know, half or one third link. It, it, it's very tight, you know, that I have really had to kind of push that into that link to make it fit and it doesn't really move very easily. Uh, so the fitting here is, you know, less than optimal, I have to say. Uh, alternating brush and polish finishing, of course, they've opted for polish on the side here, which is an interesting choice because the case back is brush, you know, the original is brush, so I'm not sure why they went for polish there. I reckon they should have went for brushing on the side. You know, that would have been more contiguous with the case, I reckon. Right, okay, so that's the entire description of the watch. Let's snap it on the wrist for a wrist shot for you guys now. And there we have it. Pretty good, right? Pretty good, uh, except, you know, because those endings don't fit very well, they don't turn down as well as the real thing. So, you know, unfortunately, that's a slight disappointment there. It should turn down a little bit more, but it doesn't. But hey, there it is. That's how it looks like. So just remember, 14 and a half millimeters thick there. Fits fine to me. You know, it's it's nearly perfect uh, in terms of fit, except for those end links. Uh, just, just, you know, leaves a little bit to be designed. What have I enjoyed about this watch? Okay, guys, this is, I reckon it's, a pretty nicely done SMP 300 homage. Okay, it's it's pretty nicely done. 
And I, I have to say the casework, the casework itself is excellent. This case is very, very well done, uh, you know, in terms of finishing, in terms of how it, you know, homages the original. Yes, it's got a fake heat and valve, but overall, you know, the choice of the the bezel visibility, you know, the, the, the bright numbers here is good. The choice of the wave dial, I think it's a good one. And the choice of making it matte is also a good one. And also they've made the hands uh, longer than the, you know, the, the, the Pierce Brosnan version. So they've kept with the longer hands. That's the correct choice here. But they've chosen not to go with the larger 42 millimeters. And I think that's a good thing. You know, 41 millimeter, I think in this watch is just a better choice. Uh, the, the decision to make the hands blue is an interesting one. I don't mind it, but some people may lament uh, the fact that it's blue. They may want it to be the original polish look uh, of many Seiko, actually, as well as the original Omega. Uh, overall, fair specifications, I have to say, right, it's got a very generic movement, NH35. The loom is pretty good. It does last all night, so the loom is pretty darn good. doesn't say whether it's Super Luminova or Seiko loom. Uh, if I get any confirmation, I'll put it down the bottom as per the other confirmations I have here. Uh, the bezel insert, uh, presumably ceramic, again, to be confirmed, uh, definitely sapphire crystal, right? That's the specs we're getting here. But it's not without its weaknesses. What are the weaknesses? Look, I think there's a questionable choice of a fake helium valve. I think either give us a real valve or just get rid of it, just give us a smooth one because a lot of people don't like the valve, especially if it's going to be fake, uh, I think people are going to be slightly annoyed about that. Uh, I think it's a questionable choice of sticking with a wave edge display back. There's nothing to display here really, uh, and that wave edge just makes it difficult to remove, to adjust if you want to do that. I reckon just stick with the older, you know, kind of simple porthole style Omega case back would be better. I think it's just more generic and probably easier to make, I reckon. Uh, the older class profile, also slightly questionable. The newer watch has this, you know, more slimmed down clasps, more links. Uh, you know, a lot of people prefer the newer one. Uh, this one is just slightly uh, questionable. It also doesn't have a micro adjustment, right? Unlike the newer one. So just slightly questionable in terms of the clasps profile here uh, that they've gone with. You know, the newer one, I think, is an improvement and probably the better one to go with. And I've also mentioned this already. The bracelet fit is poor. Right, this this link, this link here doesn't doesn't move because it's just so stiff, and the end links, you know, just show you like that, just don't fit well. They they should fit well. They should turn down more. This one doesn't quite do that, so that's subpar, I reckon. Uh, overall, three hundred and twenty USD with NH thirty five is getting a bit steep for an homage watch. I think if it's a fully original design, uh, you could command that price maybe. But I think if you're homaging, you know, your Seiko modding, probably that's getting a little bit steep. And probably most of you will think that, but let me know in the thoughts below what you reckon. Uh, the domain name, you know, Swiss watches, I think, again, a little bit confusing, a bit questionable why they've stuck with that. Maybe they'll update that in the future, and hopefully they do, and just make it clearer for their customers. That's That would be my view on it. Uh, and then I did ask about this as well. Yes, you can mod Seiko watches. You can sell those mods, but can you put in the dial that wasn't made by Seiko and then slap on the name Seiko in there? I think that just, I'm just not sure about that because it looks like you're selling a Seiko when clearly that dial isn't a Seiko. So you know, let me know if you know more about that. Uh, I would like to learn more about this, uh, you know, kind of little world, which I am not so familiar with. So there you go, guys. That's my review of this Seiko Seamaster Pro 300M mod from Swiss Watches. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, uh, thank you for sticking with me. I'll see you guys next time.